Just today I learned about a new type of number. <clears throat> Just today I learned about a type of a number called a Hilbert number. And I guess I had seen results like this before, but I didn't know that they were built Just today I learned about something called a Hilbert number and a Hilbert prime. And I had seen results like this before, but I didn't know that they were due to Hilbert. Okay, so before we get started, let's recall the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. That says that every natural number has a unique factorization into primes. Well, really it's only unique up to permutation of the primes. So obviously we can write 6 as 2 times 3 or 3 times 2. Those are considered to be the same factorization. So there are two things here. So one is that it has a factorization into primes. So that's one thing that you would have to prove. And another thing is that factorization is unique. Okay, so now that we've got this kind of recalled, let's see what Hilbert numbers are. So Hilbert numbers are all numbers of the form 4n plus 1. So I've written it like this. Capital H is 4n plus 1 as n ranges over all non-negative integers. So we've got 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, then so on and so forth. And so next we want to define something called a Hilbert prime. So H in H is called a Hilbert prime if it only factors in H as H times 1. So we'll write a list of Hilbert primes in just a second, but I want to notice that 9 is a Hilbert prime. We'll notice 9 cannot be rewritten as anything except for 9 times 1 if you use Hilbert numbers. Obviously, if you use regular numbers, it's equal to 3 times 3. But both 3 and 3 are not of the form 4n plus 1. Okay, good. So maybe our first goal is to prove the following claim, and that is h is closed under multiplication. It also has a multiplicative identity of 1, and I think that makes H called something like a multiplicative semigroup, although there's lots of terms for things like that, so I don't know the exact correct term. Okay, so let's maybe prove that. So let's suppose alpha and beta are in H, but that means that alpha is equal to 4m plus 1, and beta is equal to 4n plus 1, and this is going to be for m and n in the set of non-negative integers. Well, now let's go ahead and take the product alpha times beta, but this is just a routine algebra problem. So we've got 4m plus 1 times 4n plus 1. That's going to give me 16mn plus 4m plus 4n plus 1. But look what we can do here. We can think about all of this being grouped and then multiplying a 4 out. So this is going to be equal to 4 times the quantity 4mn plus m plus n. And then we've got a 1 on the outside. Well, we could maybe, if we wanted to, group all of these together into a new number, which we would maybe call capital A. And notice we've got alpha times beta is 4 times A plus 1, but that means it's obviously in H. Okay, so now that we've proven this claim, let's look at some more Hilbert primes. And notice that they come in a couple of different flavors. So notice that 5 is the first Hilbert prime. Well, 1 is not a prime because it's a unit. And then 9 is the second Hilbert prime, but this is not a regular prime. So I'll maybe put a little arrow under it to remind ourselves that this is not a regular prime. It's 3 times 3. And then next we have 13 and 17. Those are both Hilbert primes and regular primes. And then after that, we'll have 21. So notice that's most definitely a Hilbert number. It's 20 plus 1. But this is equal to 3 times 7. 3 times 7 are regular primes, but not Hilbert primes. So that makes this another like interesting type of Hilbert prime in that it is not a regular prime. 
So maybe I'll skip some, but I do want to point out that 33 is a Hilbert prime. That's three times 11. So that's not a normal prime, but it is a Hilbert prime. And then maybe lastly, let's say 49. Notice that that is seven squared. That's not a normal prime, but it is a Hilbert prime. So maybe as an exercise, fill in the rest of the Hilbert primes and post in the comments, are there more Hilbert primes or regular primes between one and a hundred? Okay, so now that we've taken care of this, I wanna prove another claim. We're continuing to draw parallels between normal primes and Hilbert primes, and thus natural numbers and Hilbert numbers. And our next goal is to prove that every element of H can be factored into Hilbert primes. We're actually going to use the regular fundamental theorem of arithmetic as a tool here, although I think you could prove it from scratch. So let's maybe start with alpha in H, not a Hilbert prime. Okay, so it's in H and it's not a Hilbert prime, but that implies that it's not a normal prime either. So I'll say is not a, and I'll just write this in quotes, normal prime. And that means it's not a prime viewed as being just from the whole set of natural numbers. Okay, now next up what I wanna do is apply the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and that'll allow me to write this as alpha equals P1 all the way up to PM, where those are primes, and then Q1 all the way up to Q2N, where those are also primes. And why have I broken it up into two classes of primes here? Well, that's because all of these are of the form 4K plus 1, and then all of these over here are gonna be of the form 4K plus three. So that tells us that the PI are Hilbert primes, but the QI are not Hilbert primes because they're 4K plus three. But via a claim similar to our first claim, if you take the product of any two elements that are 4K plus three, you get something of the form 4K plus one. So that means the product of any two of these Hilbert not non-Hilbert primes will be a Hilbert prime. So let's maybe write that down. So QI times QJ is a Hilbert prime. Great. Again, because the only way that it can be factored is as QI times QJ, but that factorization is not legal within the Hilbert numbers. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce some notation. Let's maybe go ahead and set H1 equal to Q1 times Q2, H2 equal to Q3 times Q4, all the way up to HN is equal to Q2n minus one, Q2n. So that's just pairing these like primes of the form 4k plus three into, well, like I just said, pairs, which are these hi. And by this observation down here, these hi are in fact Hilbert primes. Okay, but then putting that all together, we see that we've got a factorization of alpha of P1 up to PM times H1 up to HN, and all of those are Hilbert primes. So just to conclude, we took an arbitrary H, which was a Hilbert number, and we factored it into a product of Hilbert primes. So that mimics part of this fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we only have the question of this uniqueness left. But the proof that we just saw really troubles us when we look for uniqueness. Because what if we didn't choose H1 to be this product of the first two, but what if we chose H1 to be Q1 times maybe Q17, and then H2 was equal to Q2 times Q34? What if we mixed up the definition of the H's? Then you can imagine 
that we would get a different factorization into Hilbert primes. And that's exactly something that is possible here. So just to reiterate, we do have a factorization, but it's not unique in Hilbert numbers. And let's maybe go ahead and get rid of this and we'll look at a concrete example of this phenomenon. So we just proved that every element of H can be factored into Hilbert primes, and we gave some motivation that uniqueness is not guaranteed. And now we're gonna look at a, an example of this, maybe with a tool that will allow you to create more and more examples. So I'm gonna start with the number 8085. I think there's enough going on with this so that you could see how to generalize this. So first off, we want to factor this into normal primes. So using that fundamental theorem of arithmetic over n. So this is actually 3 times 5 times 7 squared times 11. So looking at this, we see that we've got a single Hilbert prime, and that's this thing right here. So this is a Hilbert prime. But the rest of those numbers are not Hilbert primes because they're of the form 4k plus 3. So now we want to take all of these non-Hilbert primes and combine them different ways. So one possibility would be 3 times 7 and then 7 times 11. Another possibility would be 7 times 7 and 3 times 11. That'll create Hilbert primes. So just to write that down, we'll have 5 times 21 times 77. So now we've got a Hilbert prime here. This is also a Hilbert prime, and this 77 is also a Hilbert prime. Again, because it factors into two primes that are non-Hilbert primes. Well, let's do it another way. We could also write this as five times 33 times 49. Again, five is a Hilbert prime, 33 is also a Hilbert prime, and 49 is also a Hilbert prime. But the really important thing here is that the list of Hilbert primes in each of these factorizations is not the same. So let's maybe write that down. So not the same. In other words, our factorization is not unique up to taking a permutation. And so that finishes off the proof of this claim. We proved everything before the comma on the last board. And then this example shows us that uniqueness is not guaranteed. So maybe I have a two-part follow-up for you guys to think about. First is, can you come up with more examples like this? Maybe what's the smallest example of a number that does not factor uniquely into Hilbert primes? I think that's probably a good exercise. And then another question is, do you know of any other algebraic structures, or I should say arithmetic structures, that have factorization into primes, but not unique factorization into primes? And that's a good place to stop.